practice you learned about the Draymond Green suspension, but how are you guys approaching that going forward to game five? Uh, I found out uh, right near the end of practice. Um, so we'll uh, meet as a staff after practice and discuss what our starting lineup and rotation will look like. Third row on the aisle here. Uh, how did you broke the news to Draymond about his suspension? Uh, Bob Myers called me after practice had started and um, he, he told me and so I pulled Draymond aside um, late, late in practice and told him and then we told the team. Was he, was he upset? Or? Oh, he's disappointed. Tim right here in the front, the first row. Yeah, I'll come back here, Steve. Are, are, how disappointed are you in this result? Uh, were you expecting this to, to come out otherwise? I have no idea what to expect, and it's irrelevant anyway. Whatever any of us feel, it's uh, the, you know we accept the ruling and we move on to Game Five. How about the time would you have liked to have heard back from the news before practice started, or earlier today, or even last night? Sure, but it didn't happen. So whatever, you know. Again, it's just. They, they made their decision, and we've got to get ready for Game 5, and that's what we'll do today. We'll follow up. I know you're not going to say who you probably don't know who you're going to start, but in the past you have tended to stay smaller with this. Would, would that generally be maybe where you're going, brain or rush, a possibility for this, for, for this start? Well, uh, one thing to note is that um, Draymond has to be on the active list. Uh, for tomorrow, so we can't put him on the inactive list. So we're going to have to take one of our available players and make him inactive, and so that will be the biggest discussion because we use everybody. You know, uh, we've used every single guy uh, during the playoffs. They've all been important, and um, that's going to be a really difficult decision. Who who is inactive? Uh, then, as far as the game itself, we're going to play a lot of people, and we'll give a lot of different looks, and we'll compete like crazy and. I think we'll give ourselves a, a great chance to win. Back row. Steve, Roz Gold on what a CSN Bay Area. Um, continuing on that thread, I know it's next man up, but what is the trickle down effect with Draymond out as far as tasks on the court, especially in that small ball unit, if, if you continue to stay that way? Well, uh, you know, he brings a lot to the table uh, defensive versatility, rebounding, uh, you know, ball handling, and passing. and so we've got to uh, figure out a way to still be effective at both ends um, without them. So we we do have, as I mentioned, a lot of players who have helped us all year long, uh, big and small, and in between. So um, probably a lot of different people will get a get a chance tomorrow. Over here on the right side. Yes, PM Brazil, Eduardo Agra. Uh, Barbosa didn't play last game. Uh, with Draymond out, of course you're going to rotate taller players in his position. That can be more minutes uh, for Barbosa? I would guess that uh, he would play. Um, I, would, I, I didn't expect to uh, not play him last game, but it's just the way the game went and the way it unfolded. So uh, with Draymond out, there's definitely a trickle-down effect, um, and I would expect Barbosa to play. John here in the second row on the right. Uh, John Schumann, NBA.com. In maybe last year, the obvious answer would be this: this affects you more defensively than offensively. Um, with the way Draymond's has game has developed over the last year, is there is it a, more of a balance, and and you have to sort of change things a little bit more as much offensively as you do defensively? I don't think we need to change things uh, offensively. We'll still play our game. Um, we want to move the ball. We want to get up and down and. Um, so that doesn't change. Obviously, we'll miss his production, but um, you know, other people can can fill that void. Joe on the back right. GoVardenCleveland.com. Steve, how had the series changed for Draymond when uh, LeBron switched on to him? His either his role or his impact, or what was most important for him? Well, the first two games they left him wide open um, on purpose. You know, they they were focusing their efforts elsewhere and obviously game two he got hot and then um, without love out there in game three they changed their their matchups and uh, 
So that put LeBron in more screening roles and all that. So um, I think it's all fairly obvious stuff. You guys watch the games. So um, when the matchups change, uh, things change for everybody a little bit. And um, so he just hasn't had as many open perimeter looks um, more than anything. Al in the front. Russell Ross of San Francisco Chronicle. I have a general question and a specific. Um, generally, do you think it was a fair decision today from the NBA? Specifically, uh, it seems like you'll lose the ability, some post defense with Draymond in the smaller lineup. Can you assess James Michael McAdoo's abilities on, on uh, post defense? First part of the question, it's irrelevant what any of us think. We just have to accept the decision and move on, so I'm not going to comment on that. And secondly, I thought McAdoo played really well during his seven or eight minutes the other night. Um, and I would expect him to play some tomorrow as well. Uh, like I said, you'll probably see everybody on the roster tomorrow. Um, but that's all right. We like we like playing that way. We believe in our guys, and uh, I think every one of them can contribute. Second row. Uh, this is from Tencent. Coach, um, during, the, uh, during the playoffs, you used to mention Draymond to watch out his word and then also his action. Did you feel disappointed at him, especially the last game, what happened to the last game? Uh, that's just uh, something that stays within the team. It's not anything uh, I'm going to comment on. Um, I'm disappointed for him that he can't play in, in a big game. But uh, the ruling has been made, and we've got to move on. Next row back. Go ahead. Steve Bitker, KCBS. Steve, sports throughout history, there have been many stories of teams that have overcome the loss of a critical player in a critical game in the postseason. Just curious from your experience as a player or as a coach, if you can cite one particular example that has stayed with you. Not as a player or as a coach, but uh, as a Laker fan growing up, uh, Kareem did not play in game six in 1980 and Magic had 42 points, 19 rebounds and 15 assists. On the road, I might add. On the road. I may have gotten those numbers wrong, but if I got them right, I want a gold star. Pretty close. All right, thanks. In the center? Jeff Sue from on, on Fire. Steve, will you tell the teams that Draymond was down? So what's their response? Uh, again, that's uh, that's just kind of our internal business. So, um, you know, we um, we have all supported one another all season long. We have uh, a deep team and guys who care for each other, and we're going to come out and play extremely hard tomorrow, and we're confident we can win. Or the right now, Akron Beacon Journal. Not that you need any more motivation, but can this have a psychological effect of chip on the shoulder kind of thing or more even more bonding or something well I just think that um, it's the NBA finals um, we're at home we have a chance to close things out I don't think we need any more you know of an edge any more psychological advantage anything like that I, it, the, the game gives us all the motivation we need and the biggest thing for us is to just tweak things a little bit here and there to try to get the right uh, rotations on the floor at the right time, and because of our versatility, I feel like you know, we'll be able to do that. Steve in the back. Uh, Steve Eshman, NBA.com. Um, Flip Saunders and, and, a, and a lot of people, I'm sure, have said that somebody's greatest strength can also be their greatest weakness. How much do you guys rely on Draymond's emotional approach to the game, and, and are you, you know, do you accept the fact that it can be a liability? Um, yeah, we, we, uh, thrive off of uh, Draymond's competitiveness and his edge, and um, it's been very important for us this year. Um, and maybe maybe that same quality has uh, led him to this point, just his competitiveness and his passion, um, and, and that's all part of it. So, uh, again, we're not thinking in those terms. I know you guys have to write the story today that uh, deals with all of that. Um, but um, we, we have to go get ready to play, and that's our only focus. From a, uh, just a sheer competition standpoint, how do you feel about the cumulative point system where behavior against one opponent can affect the series against another? I do think it's curious that uh, somebody who gets knocked out in the first round and who's been on vacation for seven weeks is under the same 
penalty system as somebody who's still playing in the finals now. I'm not sure why that uh, is the case. It seems like a strange rule. That's not anything we're going to going to bring up uh, with the league, or um, maybe it's something to talk about in the off season. It does seem a little strange. Any other questions? Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Stand by.